Hello to the Chicos and the Chicas. Today we are going to analyze a game once again, um, a Grandmaster game. Uh, this time around I played against the famous, infamous uh, Grandmaster Ilya Smirin, uh, who might have had a bit of an incident lately that made him from famous to infamous. But anyway, uh, we are focusing here on the chess. So in the white trunks is yours truly and uh, black is the Israeli Grandmaster the champion of the King's Indian defense, which is exactly what we have on the board in this game today. And here I went slightly against my chessable course, which recommends castles. And I went with my old instinct, bishop e3. Often these two overlap, um, especially after e5. But here, Grandmaster Smirin decided to throw in g4, which was certainly a bit of a weird choice, but not unusual. When bishop is on e3, this is a typical way to hassle. And now I went bishop g5, h6, bishop back. And here, according to the engine, g5 is a big mistake, which I failed to capitalize on. Bishop g3 was played, of course. And after e5, he white has a very strong move that I, for whatever reason, completely overlooked. And I played here the, what I considered very natural d5. But instead, h4 really throws the spanner in the works cracking the king side open and leaving the tension in the center, which is going to allow me to create further problems. In fact, according to the engine, the best move here um, for black is takes and after knight takes d4, now this is bleeding out, the light squares are very vulnerable. The whole position looks like a red hot mess, really. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a, a, a miss on my end. I played d5 and after, after f5, I took on f5. Now one thing that you need to know about this structure is, is that, um, and I'm telling you this as a King's Indian player, both white and black side of the business, that f5 is always of course the break that black aims for in the King's Indian, but when you have got your pawns here and here, well there's no novelty in having this pawn here, but having this pawn here, it means that anytime we take, a peculiar situation occurs where the e4 square becomes white because we are no longer able to take back on f5 with the pawn. And so very often black considers this to be a great achievement to move the knight and take on f5. But the reality is, is that if I manage to blockade the e4 square, it is a really bad position for black. Knight f6 was played. And now in the spirit of uh, what I just said, we went knight d2 aiming to read out the knight here. Knight c5 was played, obviously contesting the idea, but here we have b4 kicking the knight right away. And after knight a6, here I played a bit of an iffy move. Queen b3 is best. Uh, defending b4 and uh, putting that queen on that diagonal, threatening c5. I instead went queen b1 because I wanted to keep an eye on that pawn, but this was, uh, this was a bit greedy. Um, and pawn e4 here would have created some counter chances on that diagonal. Um, Grandmaster Smirin did play e4, I played castles, he played bishop takes um, f5, and now I went queen b3. And from here on out, unfortunately, I completely tunnel visioned on this e4 pawn, and my only plan was to round it up, take it and win, and I actually pulled that off uh, with apparent ease, but a lot went past the keeper or the keepers, I should say, on both sides. We missed a lot of opportunities. So this part of the game is not something that is very pretty. Um, he played h5, very logical King's Indian instinct attacking. And I played h4 thinking that, oh yeah, no worries. If you take, uh, I take back with the bishop and I'm happy if you push past, which happened. I'm also happy because the king's side is closed. However, I totally overlooked here the fact that neither push nor take is forced. And they can just play knight h7. And um, now black really does get that dreaded kingside attack with a lot of peace mobility and activity, open files and diagonals. And all of a sudden, this is a mess. Instead, I should have played the more measured h3 and against g4, h4. And against h4, which I didn't like. And that's why I didn't do it because I thought they had g4. Here the engine pulls off a beautiful positional exchange sack, take, 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 and take, inviting bishop takes, rook takes, and um, I thought that, no, I did something wrong, wait, 
Yeah, no. Sorry, my bad. Uh, against bishop takes, we are not taking. We are playing rook here. Uh, against knight takes, do we do this? Take, 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 and take. And this is largely reminiscent of a um, Petrosian-Spassky game where Petrosian did a similar uh, exchange sack in the King's Indian and it turned out that it was Black's King that remained completely naked. And uh, also the A6 Knight is uh, just completely uh, sidelined for the rest of the game. Ironically, the game that I'm quoting, the Petrosian one, featured Petrosian having a Queen here. And black having a knight on a5, which was also unable to retreat and enter the fray or re-enter the fray. Anyway, so h4 was a mistake, g4 was played, and now this is just a red hot mess. And here I continuously kept on missing the simple chess, c5, opening up this or aiming to open up, threatening c6, ridiculing the knight. This would have been just terminal according to the engine, and it's not very hard to see that that is the case. Uh, bc5, queen c4 will pick off the pawn. The beautiful pawn center is really awesome. Black's pawn structure is a mess. Yeah, this would have been very nice. Um, so I played bishop f4 because I wanted to blockade this pawn or disallow the advancement of it. And now, once again, as I announced, I am just doing the most caveman chess ever. Rook e1, bishop here, bishop here, and I want to pick off this. He plays queen g6. I miss c5 like a champion, because that's what I'm best at. I play bishop d1, rook e8, and this is the most embarrassing part of the game, because here, not even I, in hindsight, I just can't believe I didn't do this. I would be normally playing here rook e3 without too much hesitation to completely shut down everything, and then double up and win the pawn. And instead, I just played bishop c2 very carelessly. To my defense, it was a blitz game, and uh, I wanted to spare time on the no-brainers. Completely forgetting e3. Like, I can't really forgive uh, this blunder, because this would have been a game-changer. And now we went from clearly winning to slightly worse. Bishop f5, ef2 check. I have to actually take with the king to preserve the rook. And after queen takes f5, knight e2, I'm barely holding on. So that was a that was an ugly one. That was an ugly one. And I'm very surprised that Smirin, who is a very seasoned tactician, and he really has his, his head screwed on when it comes to, you know, tactical possibilities and attacking chances, he missed this move. And by playing rook e7, he handed me a free victory. Uh, I now blockaded the pawn like a champ, recognizing the mistake. And uh, the rest is really simple. I just piled up on that pawn. And there is nothing to defend it. Having said that, I don't very don't recall seeing a scenario too often when there is a pawn on the board protected by one, two, three, four, five pieces, and it's being lost because it's attacked by one, two, three, four, five, six. That is just absolutely crazy that I have got seven pieces on the board and six of them are attacking a single pawn, and um, that's it. It can't be protected. This is just insanity. Ninety-seven. And now I just cashed in, knight e4, knight takes, bishop takes, takes, knight, uh, rook takes. And at this point, I was already like, hmm, I reckon there is some tactics here. And he played in knight e5, and I started calculating the various tactical ideas. I actually made a tweet about this position, um, and most people figured it out too. So white here has a beautiful win by bishop takes e5. Um... And this forces black to retake with the pawn. If you want to figure out the rest of the tactic, you can pause the video here. Uh, pawn takes would have allowed me to play queen b3 or c5 right away. Isolated pawn, um, terrible bishop, good knight. It is just misery. Um, absolute misery for black. But instead he fell for the trap that I set, which was that after bishop takes e5, we had this awesome intermezzo rook e5 idea, hitting the queen with a check. And when they take the queen down here, I had the check on g5 to escape with the rock. And um, that immediately did the damage. And Smirin resigned. It doesn't matter what they do in the next move. I'm going to take the queen on b1, keeping a extra knight. And uh, yeah, just simply winning the game. Please note that this was a three minute blitz game. So obviously the quality at points was lacking because of that. Nonetheless, this is one of my best uh, scalps. 
I think in uh, the Blitz department. At the time of the game, Blitz, uh, Smilin was about 28.50 Blitz on uh, .com. So, yeah, this was a very, very delicious victory. And actually, a couple of days later, I played a game against Christopher Yu, who is like 29.90 on chess.com and he flagged me in a position that was like plus nine to me um and i actually entered the last 10 moves of the game with a slight edge on the clock but i lost it that would have been very delicious but because of i didn't win that and now i'm presenting this for you um i hope you appreciated it i hope you liked it and um i will be back with the next video soon don't forget to sub to like to comment and to super like also shout out to the legend who i am not going to name because um he didn't give me permission, but um, I got a hefty $200 donation uh, for my YouTube content, which I really, really do appreciate. Too. So thank you, legend. You know who you are. And he actually mentioned to me to make it more obvious that there is a donation link. So you can super like these videos and also uh, in my channel's banner somewhere up there, if you go onto the banner, it's uh, there is a PayPal link that says support the channel. So if you would like to express your gratitude, there are multiple ways to do so. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I will be back with the next soon. Bye.